What's going on? Back for the game. What's your boy, bro? So listen, y'all. We're going to go ahead and get right into it. I've been reading the comments of the last video about the updates. And a lot of people are asking me, Yo, D, what should I put on this character? What will be best on this character? That's going to have to be an entirely different video. Okay, that's going to be a whole video on what skills will be best. And that's going to vary on what you like to do, how you like to play the game. So that's not going to be the same answer for every single person, all right? I will try and get with you guys in the comment section, though. So if you have any questions on that, just let me know. But just know I will have a video coming on that specifically, right? So I will cover some of those in this video, though, okay? So we just need to talk about this, all right? First of all, just let me say my final thoughts. I feel like this is great content for the game in some ways. I feel like it's new content and it's going to take a while to do. It's going to give players something to work for, something to grind for, something to achieve. Okay? The first thing, they need to fix the whole color scheme. They did address that, that they definitely will fix the colors. But when this first drops, from what I understand, to max link slotting characters is going to be orange at 30, 30, 30. That's boring. Like, they really need to make sure they make it so, all right, you know, uh, orange will be for 10, 10, 10 link slots, and 20, 20, 20 will be like gold or blue or red, something exotic. And then give us something for... 30 30 30 max transcended k lab please like you purple is a flex okay but if i can be purple and then be you know 30 30 30 that's a whole nother flex on itself because you can get 30 30 30 with zero uh transcendence okay so you don't need max dupes for that so there needs to be Something for 30, 30, 30 slots and 30, 30, 30 slots with max transcendence. All right? I'm just saying we need to do that. There's no way you make this new power-up system. People need to know exactly what is what, okay? I think there should probably be a color for 15, 15, 15 because how would you know? Like, are you literally supposed to check every single enemy you fight in pvp before you fight them like we should know at a glance okay this character uh he got two level three link slot characters okay we should know that from a glance and then know based off that do i even want to look do i even have anywhere near that okay that's something that needs to be clear that needs to be addressed all right something else that needs to be addressed okay Will potion link skills work in Super IZ? Because if potion link skills work, and I do not think they will. And the thing is, this is they're putting us in a situation, bro. If potion link skills don't work, which would be good for now at least, right? At some point in time, people are going to say, oh my god. I want to farm super link slot potions faster. And it's going to be a whole new wave of super link slot characters. And then this mode is already more difficult than regular IZ. So if they're forcing you to play with units that maybe aren't the best, just because you get the bonus for the potion link skill, like you got to remember. This is like a combination of extreme co-op and IZ. The thing about IZ is that there's no time limit, bro. As long as it's your week or your day, you can take 10, 15 minutes on one run if you need to. I mean, God awful. Just saying. But extreme co-op, yo, your extreme co-op take more than so long, people are going to quit, bro. Because... It's a time constraint. We're only going to have two hours at certain points of the day to farm this. And just like I told you, the schedule will be like extreme co-op, okay? So it's going to be available 
five times a day for two hours. So it'll be on for two hours, off for three. On for two, off for three, on for two, off for three, on for two, off for three. So basically, this is what this tells you, bro. You have to commit, I would say, bare minimum, bro, four hours a day <clears throat> while this is out. Now, it says it's going to be going on from March 25th to April 19th, which is me and Gino's birthday. Um, and the homie Blue Tech. You ain't forgot about my man. But, yeah, bro. So, during this timeline, it's basically going to be every day. It's going to be just like the IZ schedule. Mind, speed, tech, power, heart. And then tech, speed, mind. And then heart, power. Okay? It's going to be the same. But if you're running with people and they're not good or they're not fast, you're going to be killing your grind, bro. So, you got to realize if you add... Uh, super IZ characters, now you're messing with people's time, but you're going to give them more efficiency. So then it's just like, now it's all over the place, bro. You might not even be able to complete it like that. Think about it, if we get like a pot kin for like one of the new super IZ characters, bro. It would be a nightmare, bro. So all in all, like I said, I think it's going to be very worth it to do it only for certain characters, bro. Like, with Transcendence, you're already destroying content in this game, bro. You're already destroying content, okay? The good thing I would say about this mode is there's no range or melee resistance. That's freaking great, okay? So if there's no range resistance or melee resistance, and there's no super link slot potion characters that means that right now it's use your best character that's great i'm very happy about that for right now i could take my max transcendent tokinata or noel or whoever i wanted and just lay it out okay auto whatever if you want a manual for max clear cool okay i get it all right you can do whatever so that's the what I wanted to talk about the actual game mode. Now there's some things that, I, that needs to be addressed. I need to address this. You can equip double of these. What you guys need to realize is this top category says bonus abilities with maximum effect limits. Okay, you can clearly read 55 paralysis duration, but the max limit is 120. Obviously, over 100 percent is just you don't need that. But you could go with double 55 paralysis duration and have 100% if you wanted to. But that's two skills, and that's required level 30 just for, a, just for a full immunity. So you could even go paralysis and then, like, freeze resistance and then put on, like, a spirit core or something. You could definitely do that. But these needed to be on here just to give us the option. For stuff like guild quest are these top tier choices not at all but it needed to be here if you tell us we can customize skills and you don't allow us to have the choice of these it would be like bro are you kidding me i think they should have been 65 percent though so it'll be more like an enhanced skill similar to how they did evasion full stamina low stamina 20, like all these are are boosted 25 percent 35 percent 25 percent and five percent uh 15 those are all boosted okay healer this is one of the worst skills in the game all this means is you heal for about five to seven percent more it doesn't allow a person that can't heal to heal bro you just heal for slightly more that's it bro that's a throwaway Damage to enemies afflicted by status elements. This is this is good, okay? But realize iron skin is a thing. Once they're afflicted by a status element, they're already losing like 40% of their damage reduction. All of their damage reduction, really. So they're already taking more damage as soon as they're afflicted by a status element. Why don't we have increased chance for status elements? Wouldn't that just be way better? Whether they just do Disabler or whether they just go ahead and, you know, uh, do it specifically like, you know, 
a Ron Clark, you know, Soul Reaper, whatever, right? Like, I, I don't understand that. That would have been significantly better than this, okay? Why is Increased Crystal Drop on here, bro? Why is this on here? I don't understand, bro. Like, someone, seriously, seriously, someone legitimately let me know if you even are remotely considering 17% increased crystal drop. Maybe you want to do it, maybe you want to do this on, like, random characters when you're farming, but not for a power increase. Like, if you've never in your life pulled a, a crystal character when there are some in the metal exchange shop and there are four stars that do it as well... Or is this is this even an option? Like seriously, okay. So that's just okay. I'm not mad that it's an option, but of all the things that aren't on here, and I, I feel like okay, give people the option to do it if they want to. Maybe they want to, you know. Maybe they want to do this for their farming characters, bro. But this is not something that a new player is going to be doing, and. And LG players are going to already have these links. So, it uh, doesn't really make sense. Um, I'm not going to go over every single one. But, without a doubt, full stamina damage is going to be, like, the best thing on every character in the game, bro. Except in PvP. But, Jugram and Tsukishima, it does work very well against them. On them, excuse me. So, yeah, man. The things that are just a, a gut-wrenching... Just blow that aren't on here. Long reach. Poise. Damage reduction. Strong attack recharge. Dude, they already told us that things will have a certain limit. If SAR is already... Like, if you have strong attack recharge and you can't get it, this would just allow characters that have strong attack damage to get SAR. And I understand that Resurrections are still coming along, but dude, they're not giving SAR to barely any characters that get resurrected as an extra link, bro. It's like one of every 10, one of one in seven or something like that, bro. A character like Tag Team Toshiro, if you give him strong attack recharge, and if you would have allowed Havoc, bro, he would have gotten a massive, massive upgrade. And then people are saying... Oh well, if they if they make it so you can get stuff like Havoc, then nobody will summon for new characters. Bro, how does that make sense when they can give characters Havoc from the jump and not require you to have to 15, 15, 15 a character just to get Havoc? That doesn't make sense. I didn't even say Guard Break because I get it. Guard Break is massively powerful. I personally said I doubt that they would give us guard break from the jump. I said a no guard break, no marauder, no sharpshooter, no uh, potion link skill, no droplet skill, no brave battle heal, no brave battle immunity. Those I'm I'm cool with, but by not allowing havoc and not allowing SAR, not allowing DR. Those are some of the biggest key weaknesses of most of the characters in the game. And K-Lab can easily control the meta by still giving characters Havoc with Guard Break or Ranged or Melee Resist. I didn't even talk about those, bro. Like, literally some of the best skills possible are not on this list. And it makes sense. I understand they're going to control it however they can, but... Players were expecting for a little bit more. What I will definitely say is long stride is one of the best skills on here because it's good in every mode except for PvP. But right now, speed clearing content isn't truly the wave. The thing about long stride is it gives you double the immunity frames and double the distance on your um, flash steps. So as long as the character already has plus one sprinter, long stride is going to be way better than just giving a character sprinter. I don't want nobody in this comment section to be like, oh, 
Now, Bond can he don't have Sprinter, so you don't want to give him Long Shot. I'll give him Sprinter. You want to do both, okay. But as long as the character has one Sprinter, they have two Flash Steps. Long Stride doubles your Flash Step distance and doubles your immunity frames. And Flash Step, just, Sprinter just gives you one more Flash Step. So with Sprinter, you're going three Flash Steps. With Long Stride, you're going four Flash Step distances, okay? So Long Stride is about twice as better as Sprinter in the standard cases, okay? So Start Barrier, Pierce Barrier... Weaken attack, weaken defense, prevent brave battle healing. That, those are five skills that are going to be best in PvP. Weaken defense is one of the best skills on here. And I wanted to make this known. You can clearly see that it says you can have a maximum limit of two weakened defenses. Which that would mean weakened defense gives you 40% more damage to enemies that are afflicted by weakened defense. So this will be 80% more damage for 7 seconds after your soul bomb in epic raids, in guild quest, in standard PvE. I think without a doubt, weakened defense is the best skill on this list because it's basically a debuff. If a character doesn't have a debuff, this is a debuff, okay? So this will lower iron skin, right? If you have this... This is a debuff, so in theory, you should be able to lower Iron Skin. Now, I'm pretty sure it does work. We can attack should lower Iron Skin as well, but I guess we'll need to see for those. But regardless, this is the only thing that literally gives you a status ailment. And it's basically one of the best status ailments in the entire game because it works in every single game mode with little dulled effect, okay? Prevent Brave Battle Healing, this is going to make characters like Tsukishima, Jugran, it's going to make characters even more broken for PvP. Okay, it's going to phase out any character that heals like Unahana. Some people are like, yeah, my Unahana is going to be so good. Nah, because people can prevent her from healing. Okay, they can't prevent her from insta-killing though. So, but yeah, man, no frenzy. I mean, I'm not even going to say no frenzy. I didn't expect that. No berserker, no bruiser, no SAR, no DR, no poise, no havoc. No sort of disabler. And the thing is that, yes, full stamina damage is amazing. But with just a level 10 SP or attack slot and 10, 10, 10 link slots, you're already going to be overpowered for 90% of the content in the game. Okay? That's just a fact. Except for hard guild quests. Okay? That's pretty much it. All right? But all this of all this does is it makes characters that are already have everything and makes them better. Characters like Fifth Anniversary Ichigo, characters like Candace are going to be even more broken. This rookie is going to just do so much crazy amounts of damage, bro. Seriously, um, she's she's going to be really insane with that. But yeah, man. Um, that's pretty much it for the video. I'm going to have another video talking about what skills are going to be best and what character. And that's going to just be a whole entire video because there's so many characters. But I just wanted to kind of get this video out here. Um, like I said, I do think that the update is going to be solid. I'm not like, oh, this is a garbage update. Because no matter what, it's going to make your characters more powerful. Okay? Your characters are going to be more powerful, but it's not going to fix certain characters that we were hoping would get some shine so that's my opinion make sure you guys wait in the comment section till next time i love y'all